Hello, my name's Laura Turner, and tonight I'm going to read to you an Otis Christmas story. It was winter time on the farm where the friendly little tractor named Otis lived. Snow covered the hills, church bells rang through the cold wintry valley, and Christmas was almost here. Christmas time was a festive time on the farm. The farmer strung lights, hung wreaths, and trimmed the annual Christmas tree. Otis loved Christmas, but this one was even more special. One of the horses was expecting a baby foal. Otis could hardly wait to welcome it into their farm family. He would teach the new arrival about life on the farm and he was excited to have a new friend to play with. Put, puff, puttity, chuff. On Christmas Eve, the farmer came to the barn and fed the animals their traditional Christmas meal of hot barn mash with chopped apples and brown sugar. Otis delighted in watching them dig around through the trough. He knew how much they loved this special treat. While the animals were eating, the farmer opened his toolbox and brought out a package wrapped with a bow. He opened the package, pulled out a shiny horn, and said, Merry Christmas, Otis. He bolted the horn onto him, saying, A special tractor needs a special horn. The farmer wished them all a Merry Christmas, and as he headed back to the farmhouse, he said, Sleep tight, all. A big snow is heading our way. Otis was so happy, he didn't know what to do. He had never ever received a Christmas gift before, and he had always wanted a horn like the truck had. As Otis settled into his stall for a good night's sleep, the snow started falling, and he thought this was sure to be the best Christmas ever. Put, puff, puttity, zzz. But suddenly, Otis awoke to the sound of troubled voices. It was the farmer in the horse's stall. The horse was pacing back and forth, breathing heavily and swinging her head up and down. Something was wrong. She stopped, pawed at the ground, dropped to the floor, rolled over and back, and then onto her side. Something was very wrong. Then Otis heard the farmer say something that sent chills through his frame. We need Doc Baker out here tonight or we'll lose them both. The farmer sent one of his helpers to get Doc Baker. As the barn door opened, they saw nothing but white. They were amazed at how much snow had fallen. The truck lunged forward, fishtailed this way and that, and promptly slid down the hill, plunging into a snowdrift. Otis watched as the farm hand spun the tires deeper and deeper into the snow. The truck was clearly going nowhere. But what about Doc? And what about the sick horse? Otis heard the farmer's words again in his head. We need Doc Baker out here tonight or we'll lose them both. Otis knew where Doc Baker lived. He'd been there once delivering some supplies with a farmer. 
and he knew a shortcut through the woods. With snow up to his chin, Otis headed out into the cold night to get Doc. Otis plowed through the white woods, put, puff, puttity chuff, over a frozen river, across a deep meadow, and up a snowy hill to the top of the steep cliff. And that's when Otis realized he was lost. He'd climbed the wrong hill. Everything looked different in the covered snow, and there was no time to turn back. Otis aimed his headlights over the cliff, saw where he needed to be, and bravely headed down the dangerous path. The way down was slippery and treacherous. It took all Otis's courage to keep going. Yet before he knew it, he had reached the bottom and he could see the edge of the hollow where Doc Baker lived. All was quiet that Christmas Eve as Otis plowed up to Doc's house. He flashed his headlights, gunned his engine, but no matter how hard he tried, no one in the house stirred. How could Otis wake Doc up? Of course, his shiny new horn. As loud as Otis could muster, he blared his horn. Beep, beep, honk, honk. Put, puff, beep, beep, honk. A light came on and Doc Baker threw open the window Otis reared up, chuffed, and spun around in a circle. It looks like Otis the tractor, Doc said. There must be trouble at the farm. In the twinkle of an eye, Doc dashed out the front door jumped on Otis and held on for dear life. Otis sped up the hollow road and followed his tracks up and over the steep cliff, down the snowy hill, back across the deep meadow, over the frozen river, and back through the white woods. The cold wind whipped through their faces as Otis and Doc Baker sped through the deep snow back to the farm. barn. The farmer and his helpers did their very best to comfort the horse, who was lying still and hardly breathing. With no way of getting Doc Baker in the blizzard, there was little hope. A hush came over the barn. The farmer prayed for a miracle, and all was quiet. Until... Hmm. But, but, beep, beep, honk, honk. The farmhands threw open the door. It's Otis and he has Doc Baker with him. They ran out into the snow to help Doc Baker into the farm. The doors closed immediately and Doc got to work. Otis stayed outside, desperately waiting to see if Doc Baker could save the horse and the little foal. Time passed slowly as Otis chuffed back and forth, 
It had been a long night and he was exhausted, yet he would not rest. He was too worried for his friend, the horse. Finally, Otis stopped in his tracks, looked around at the farm, all silent and covered in a blanket of peaceful snow. Daylight was near and Christmas day would soon be upon them. Suddenly, the barn doors opened and a warm glow poured inside. Otis heard the farmer say, well, would you look at that? When Otis puffed in, the animal stepped aside. There in the middle of the barn stood a beautiful baby foal, his spindly legs straining to keep him upright. Then Otis saw what the farmer was talking about. The little foal had the marking, the shape of a star on his forehead. That Christmas day, after the roads were cleared and people from all around the valley came to the barn to get a glimpse of the Christmas foal, Otis beamed with pride and realized that this certainly was the best Christmas ever. And as much as he loved his shiny new horn, Otis knew that he had more important gifts that, that, that Christmas. He had his farm family, he had his friends, and the newborn foal and they were the greatest gifts of all. The end. I hope you enjoyed this story and I wish you and your family a very Merry Christmas.